this is unique to our environment. I'm not sure I understand how to manage a government civil service organization. <laughs> GE's Jack Welch was revered as a great manager. He says if an organization is to stay vital, it must reward its best workers, and the bottom 10% have to go. We tell people in the bottom 10, look, you got a year. Find yourself somewhere to go. And they do. By doing that, he made GE unbelievably successful. But what he did at GE is forbidden at most public schools. We have a system in which we don't distinguish among people. And as a result of that, we don't reward excellence. Why don't you reward excellence? Because it's barred by the contract. Ah, yes, the union contract. Here it is, more than 200 pages of fine print. Union monopolies often create documents like this. It's not just 200 page contract. You got all these addenda that are incorporated into the contract. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages more. So it is a regulatory nightmare. So much so that he couldn't just fire that teacher who sent those sexual emails. Up, down, around, everywhere. We've paid him. He hasn't taught, but we have had to pay him because that's what's required under the contract. Paid him more than $300,000. Only after six years of expensive litigation were they finally able to fire him. Hundreds of teachers who the city calls incompetent, racist, dangerous, or guilty of sexual misconduct have been paid millions. And what do they do with those teachers? Well, they put them in the rubber room. That's what they call it. It's not really made of rubber, but it's a big empty room and this building and four other buildings around town. Because they don't want these teachers to get near the kids, so they just come here and sit. Hang around, read magazines, waste time, and waste your money. They wouldn't allow us to take pictures inside while the teachers were there. Today, the city pays $20 million a year to house teachers in rubber rooms. Insane as that is, at the union rally, teachers told me they support the firing rules. What if a principal says, you're a lousy teacher, I want to fire you. That's not good, that's not right. You prove it. You prove I'm a bad teacher. If you can't prove it, don't try it. Everywhere, unions resist the practice that made GE and other organizations successful. Weed out the bad. There aren't really bad teachers. The rules must stand, say unions everywhere. Wisconsin public schools are great schools. Test scores are up. The teachers' unions spend millions on ads saying the schools are great. There's an explosion of excellence in New York public schools. Since the schools are excellent, they say, don't mess around with our rules and benefits. Permit members to retire without penalty at age 55. Mm -hmm. Teachers would work uniform six hours and 40 minute days at all levels. Which is what normally happens in the private sector. Really? She says her teachers should work regular hours, but how many of you work a uniform six hour, 40 minute day? But the union is powerful. And a few months after our interview, Weingarten got a new contract. This is a really good day. Look at the smiles. In exchange for a 15% raise, the union made concessions. For example, they agreed to work 10 minutes a day longer. They say it will be easier to get rid of sex offenders, but it will still take all these steps to fire an incompetent teacher. Unionized monopolies like yours fail. And um, in this case, it's the children who, are, who you are failing. We are not a unionized monopoly. And ultimately, those folks who want to say this all the time, they don't really care about kids. Those who criticize a monopoly don't care about kids? Nonsense. And when we return, we'll show you what parents have to do.